Hi there, this is the second tutorial that I I apologize for the amount of time it's taken me to get these running. Um, there's There were some issues getting things uploaded properly to Blackboard and I finally just gave up and kind of cheated a little bit, but I got them up and that's all that matters. <laughs> so I'm sorry I'm so late making this post um, and I'm sorry if you hear talking in the background. The class that's adjacent to my my office is a little rambunctious but I didn't want to wait any longer to get this tutorial to you. So I just wanted to give you a quick um, little tour of my comp lab. So uh, there are a lot of different ways that you can get to my comp lab. You can probably log in directly, but through Blackboard you can get to it through nearly all of the weekly assignments folders. And I've also put a link up in web links. So whichever method you prefer. I mostly just wanted to show you around inside the space. So, and again, if you're in my WC1 class, I'm using the WC2 shell this time, so, but it should all look pretty much the same. Um, mine may look a little different from yours because I'm an instructor, but I think I may have gotten it set up, so it should look pretty similar. Um, the easiest way for most students who are at least the ones that I've spoken to to access your assignments and to kind of figure out what to do is to just go to the student calendar. The only thing you have to keep in mind about the student calendar is that their week runs from Monday to or Sunday to Saturday whereas our week runs from Monday to Sunday. So you'll always want to kind of jump ahead a little bit and just see what's coming up due that Sunday. So this Sunday, for example, you see this little green alarm clock. If you click on that day, it'll highlight the whole week. So it'll if I had other assignments posted over here, they would come up too, but I do not. Um, but it will provide you a link to whatever assignment happens to be due. And this is not just necessarily like quizzes and things, but also some sort of supplemental materials that I thought you might want to read. Some audio lessons the occasional grammar quiz and things like that. Um, so that's one way to sort of get to your assignments. You can also go to, ah, that's what I was trying to avoid, <laughs> you can also go to your study plan. Um, if you click on my assignments and see what's due, that'll come up. Once you're finished they should show up under completed. And you can also look at your study plan. Now the main reason I wanted to show you this section is because one of the options that you have for completing the lab component of this class is to complete some grammar quizzes in my comp lab. So after you've taken your grammar diagnostic, if you come in here to your study plan and you, you have to click on each individual section, but the reason I wanted to show you this is because some of them, once you've taken that diagnostic, instead of saying required by instructor, it will show up as required by diagnostic. So um, if you're looking for grammar quizzes that you can take for lab credit, just go through here and look for things that say required by diagnostic. Now it'll pull up things like this as well, uh, the readings and things um, that are related to uh, whatever it thinks that you need to work on. So for example, if it if it thinks that you have issues with comma splices, you may have a few little readings about comma splices and how to fix comma splices, how to avoid comma splices. You may even have a little video. What you actually get lab credit for though are the quizzes. So make sure that you look for something that has this kind of green uh, wheel spoke icon next to it because those are what you'll be completing in order to get lab credit. If you don't complete those, um, I don't always have a way to look to see that you've done the readings if I haven't assigned them. So if you don't do the quiz, then I basically have no proof that you've done anything related to grammar in my comp lab if I hadn't assigned it. So um, anyway, I wanted to make sure that you sort of saw that and knew where that was. I had a lot of confusion about that last semester, so I'm trying to nip that in the bud. I don't know if you guys can hear the noises going on in my office, but they're quite interesting. So sorry if I get distracted. Uh, you also have a link to the eText, and the text 
is basically almost like a PDF copy of the textbook. Hopefully yours will load a little faster than mine. <laughs> the computers at the campus are a bit slow today. Um, and the book is fairly easy to navigate. Uh, you can just expand. You can click on the part, click on the chapter title. You can also, if you know, uh, if I reference a page number or something, you can also type in the page number and it'll take you directly to the page. You do have highlighting capabilities and you can also leave yourself notes and that can be really handy, especially if you're kind of getting used to reading online. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it can take a little bit of getting used to, but sometimes you know, tools like this are a nice alternative to, um, to handwriting notes as you read, although I'm a big fan of handwritten notes myself. It helps me remember things. So uh, the glossary and the index are also included in the e-text. It's very easy to navigate and uh, there are search features up here that you can utilize as well. You can zoom in if you're having trouble seeing. Um, you can also get rid of... Oh, that wasn't what I meant to do, sorry. <laughs> Hide the navigator if you don't want anything on the page to kind of distract you. And then if you need it again, you can just click the double arrow up there and it'll pop back out. You can These will let you kind of expand the pages. You can add bookmarks. I've not experimented too much with a lot of this. I am not a fan of reading on electronically. Sometimes it's sort of a necessary evil, but I'm a very tactile person, so I like to have stuff in my hands. <laughs> so if I am reading online, then I'm taking notes uh, by hand. But everybody learns differently. So it's really a matter of figuring out what works for you. And by all means, experiment with all of this and let me know if there's something that you come across that you think is really helpful for you because it's something I'd be happy to share with other students. They do also have this composing space and I'm not requiring you guys to do any composing or to submit any written work in my comp lab. What you so what you want to do, if you want to use the space, that's entirely up to you and you can use it as much or as little as you like. But I did think it was worth mentioning that it was here. So uh, as you can see, it's set up very similar to Microsoft Word. You've got very similar menus up here. But um, the benefit, supposedly, is all of these writing tools. And I've kind of looked through some of these a little bit and I can understand how it would be handy to have these just for quick reference. Uh, and some of these are actually not just things that you read, but they're actual activities. So like I could click launch activity and it would have me free write. And it would save my work for me. Or outlining. It'll give you a little blurb about explaining what outlining is and give you a sample. And then you would do launch activity. And then here it allows you to create your own outline. Oh, it's not working the way I want it to. Ah, oh, there we go. Sorry. User error, of course. Um, so you can add your your sections as you like. If you don't, if you decide you want to start over, you can clear all. When you're done, you can print it. Um, so it's not you're not limited to only having access to it in my comp lab and I think that's kind of a nice feature so you're welcome to experiment with that as much as you like I kind of figure you guys have paid for this and you may as well you know get your use out of it and if there are some things in here again that you find useful or that you really like please by all means let me know see quick links to the e-text some commonly confused words if you can't you know you're trying to write and you're can't remember if it's supposed to be effect or affect. That could be really handy. They also have these research guidelines. You can just pull up really quickly. This I think would be really neat actually if you're trying to put together a works cited page. You can just select from the menu. I also wanted to let you guys know that they do offer tutoring through my comp lab. I've had sort of 
um, mixed feedback from students in the past about this option, but it is free and you're welcome to use it. And if you do, please let me know and let me know what your experience is like. <clears throat> uh, I believe you would either type your stuff in here or copy and paste it in here for the tutor to be able to see it. And um, I, it's, you know, it's free, it's included with the price of the program, so I'm not very familiar with it. I think I've only had maybe one or two students use it, uh, and I've been using my comp lab for a couple of years now. Uh, so I think students tend to try to use the online writing lab versus this, but if you find yourself in a bit of a pickle and the online writing lab is really backed up and the writing center is full and has no appointments available, it might be worth looking into. There's also a dictionary and a thesaurus, again very similar to Microsoft Word, so you might consider giving this a shot and just kind of seeing if it helps you out. Your gradebook is fairly self-explanatory. I'm not going to click on it because it does something weird for me because I'm a teacher and I don't want to <laughs> accidentally show grades or anything. Um, there are some communication tools. I would recommend just sticking to using these in Blackboard. I don't... Uh, I tried to keep as much as I could aside from the assignments that I showed you in the student calendar. I tried to keep as much as I could in Blackboard just for the sake of trying to simplify things so that you know if you have a discussion forum post you got to do it in Blackboard. Um, otherwise I think it just gets a little confusing. But that's pretty much all there is to my comp lab. It's pretty user friendly once you get, if you have uh, sort of connectivity issues and you have difficulty with your code not working or something like that, um, sometimes that's an issue. But once you get past that, I haven't heard students tell me that they have a lot of trouble finding things. So. I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Let me know what you guys think about my comp lab and about the resources that you find there. If you think that they are um, helpful or good supplements to the textbook or better than the textbook. I'm actually considering using my comp lab without the e-text and with a version of They Say I Say that has readings in it instead for future classes. So I just would like to know what you think, if you think that the re resources in this program are sufficient. And anyway, I hope that's helpful for you, especially if you've not used my comp lab before. And if you run into any problems or if you have questions or if you want a tutorial or a video on anything in particular, please don't hesitate to let me know. This is my first semester doing these videos. I've always had difficulty, like I said, getting them to import properly <laughs> into Blackboard. But now that I've kind of figured out a way that I can cheat the system and work around to get them posted, I'm happy to do more of them. So just let me know if you would like to see that. I'll be in touch soon.